perplexed, but we're not in despair. He says, we don't know what to do, but we're okay. We're okay. Hey, this is, this is how a true servant behaves. He says, persecuted, but not forsaken. He says, there's people that are persecuting us. They hate us and they're trying to destroy us. They're trying to take our very lives. He says, and yet we have people that love us and we have a God that loves us. He says, uh, cast down, but not destroyed. He says, there's no glory in this, folks. I'm a fugitive. I crawl in and out of cities. I get let down in baskets. I sneak in and out. I'm not getting a trumpet fanfare every time I come to visit the church at Corinth. Matter of fact, you folks just got mad at me for correcting you. He says, cast down. He says, but not destroyed. <laughs> There's, hey, I'm still living. I still have breath. And he says, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Friend, we don't even we can't even relate to this. You, you you folks that whine and cry about your life situations, you're big babies. And I understand the Apostle Paul was the Apostle Paul. Um, he had the same God you have, the same Holy Spirit that you have. And you whine and cry about the stupidest things. I don't mean to be unkind to you, but and uh, listen, you don't bear in your body the dying of the Lord Jesus that I know of. How many of you here today have scars? from torture for serving Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul says, my physical body, and you know, people envision Paul a lot of different ways. best way to envision him is this guy was beat up really bad. How many times was he stoned and left for dead? You know what that makes you look like? Shipwrecked, beaten, with 40 stripes save one. So this guy had, you know, he was, he was probably deformed and misshapen. Probably did. He probably couldn't even Talk. It's probably one of the reasons that they said his letters are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. I would, I, this is speculation, and it, it's not in the Bible, but probably he'd been beat up so bad he couldn't talk. And when he got up to preach, he bore in his body, and we can laugh about that. I'm telling you, this guy knew about persecution. And he said that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. He said Jesus Christ was nailed to a cross and crucified. And if we're going to live with Christ, we're going to have to live the crucified life. And so this is how a believer looks when he serves God. Quit crying about your scars. Apostle Paul said we're okay. And we're okay because of who God is and because of the ability that God has given us with His Spirit. And he goes on to say this, For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. He said it's a constant thing for people that are alive to be near death for Jesus' sake. And he says that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. He says the very fact that my body bears scars and that I am always on the verge of death is a picture of the fact that Jesus is alive and in heaven. Friend, the Apostle Paul had a, had a Savior who was alive, was in heaven and interceding on his behalf in the presence of God. And he said, the fact that the situations that I'm going through are happening is a testimony to the fact that God is alive in heaven and His Son, Jesus Christ, is sufficient for all things. Mm -hmm. Friend, you, you don't have anything going on in your life that God's not sufficient for. You haven't been dealt a bad hand, and now you have to try to survive it in your own strength. You've been given a life that could bring glory to God Almighty if you see yourself as a servant, a minister of the Gospel for His sake. And He says, So then death worketh in us, but life in you. And He said, So suffering's for me, and, and uh, it's so that the work of Christ can have its effect in your lives. And that's why He didn't need a letter of commendation or an epistle of commendation from them to say that he had God's authority. The fact was is that they could uh, see Christ and receive the gospel message as a result of his ministry. And he said, because I've got this kind of ministry, he said, I'm not going to faint. Faint doesn't just mean quit. It means not be tired. And he said, so I'm just going to tirelessly serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And it'll bring him the glory. It won't bring me the glory. And that's the way it ought to be. And friend, there's a number of reasons why you could say, that it's not that good. 
I guarantee they won't be as good as the reasons that the Apostle Paul gave for it being wonderful. You're not that good is nothing compared to the things that he said, hey, this is good for the testimony of Christ. Well, you know, I just got this to take care of and I've got these people and this is happening and, and uh, boy, I'm getting sick and, and I don't even know how long I'm going to live. You bear the marks of serving Christ in your body. Apostle Paul said, I do and it's beneficial. It's part of serving God and it points to Christ. Friend, if you would take the things that you allow to keep you from serving God, surrender them to Him. You know, He could take those things and use them for His glory. Good. He could take your background and He could use it for His glory. He could take your position right now, even if you got yourself in it. He could take your position right now and use it for His glory. And it could be an evidence that Jesus Christ is alive and He's in heaven. And folks have come to saving knowledge of Christ. He said, death worketh in us, but life in you. And life would be worked in the lives of others with your testimony. How about it? How about it? Do you see the gospel of Jesus Christ as a ministration of death or a ministration of life? It all has to do with your perspective. It has to do with how you see yourself. Do you see yourself as a servant? Or do you see as your, yourself as needing served? Heavenly Father, help us as we go to your word. First of all, to see how important it is that we believe in Jesus Christ. Father, for those of us that have trusted Christ as our Savior, help us to see how important it is that the gospel of Jesus Christ be one that we are a servant to and a minister of. Lord, help us to see that we don't we aren't called to do anything that we can't because we'll be enabled with your power. God, help us not to see ourselves as deserving of some kind of life that you haven't called us to. Rather, instead, help us to see us as your servants. For Jesus' sake, we ask in his name. Amen. If you tent, stand your feet and open your hymn books to page 381, the blue hymn book. <clears throat> We're going to sing as you're all on the altar. The altar of sacrifice, and the question will be this: If God spoke into your heart today, the invitation will be a time when, if you can't sing that song and have it be the prayer of your heart, you could just do business with God. We, that's what we'd invite you to do during our hymn of invitation. As we sing, as you're all on the altar of sacrifice, if God spoke to you and said, "You know what? This is what the Bible says, and this is the attitude that the leader ought to have," but this is your perspective or your attitude. If you're wrong, would you just do business with God and correct it? Would you just let the Lord do the work that He wants to in your life? Listen, friend, it's a wonderful thing for God to speak to your heart and to convict you and persuade you that there's something in your life that needs to be changed. It won't do you any good until you respond to it, and that's what the invitation's about. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, well, uh, you know, light is something that my life's just been a life of darkness. And this whole matter of whether there's a God or not a God, I don't know God. I don't, I don't know Him personally, and I want to. I want to have a relationship with God. And I, I might even be willing to serve Him, but I don't even know Him. Well, friend, the invitation will be a time we'd invite you. If you don't know that you're going to heaven, you don't know that you have a relationship with God, come forward during the invitation and uh, come come tell me and I'll, I'll open a Bible with you or have someone open a Bible with you and show you how you can know for sure that you're going to heaven and that you have a relationship with God. We're going to sing uh, page 381 as you're all on the altar. And as we do so, uh, if you want to pray right where you stand, feel free to do so. Feel free to kneel. If you need someone to pray with you, that's what I'm here for. I'll be glad to. You have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly, fervently prayed. But you can Oh!